Part 3, Mutual Fund America. The third section of the audiobook deals with the $8 trillion mutual fund industry, now our nation's largest financial institution. Mutual funds constitute the major portion of the missing link that enabled the managers of corporate America to assert their nearly unchecked power to place their own interests ahead of the interests of their owners. Paradoxically, however, it is in the very structure of the mutual fund industry itself where we find the greatest violation of owners' capitalism. In effect, the fund industry operates under an institutionalized system of managers' capitalism, one so deeply entrenched that it will be difficult to dislodge. An institution with its own serious governance problems and riddled with conflicts of interest is hardly in a preferred position to cast stones at others. While the shareholder wealth consumed by the managers of corporate America has been far from trivial, the shareholder wealth consumed by the managers of mutual fund America has been enormous. More than one-fifth of the robust annual gross returns generated for investors in the financial markets, stock, bond, and money market alike during the past two decades, has been siphoned off by fund managers. The awesome magic of compounding returns has been overwhelmed by the tyranny of compounding costs. Without a major reduction in the share of market returns arrogated to themselves by our mutual fund intermediaries, more than three-quarters of the future cumulative financial wealth produced by stocks over an investment lifetime will be consumed by fund managers, leaving less than 25% for the investors. Yet, it is the investors themselves who put up 100% of the capital and assume 100% of the risk. As in the earlier cases of corporate America and investment America, I also describe why mutual fund America went wrong. The principal instigating factor has been a basic shift in orientation from a profession of stewardship to a business of salesmanship. How can it be fixed? Since the ownership of Mutual Fund America is held largely by 95 million individual investors, most of modest means and none with the kind of latent power that institutional investors hold over corporate America, my prescriptions for reform are more complex. But although these reforms will be far more difficult to accomplish, the winds of change are already beginning to blow in a positive direction. Conclusion American Capitalism in the 21st Century. So all is hardly lost. In corporate America, investment America, and mutual fund America, owners are awakening. The disgusting scandals in business, on Wall Street, and in the fund industry have opened the door to reform that has already begun. Despite all their wealth and power, our corporate managers, our institutional investors and our fund operators will be forced, haltingly, spasmodically, and slowly perhaps, but inevitably, to accept an idea whose time has come. The owner is king. In the fourth section of this book, I reflect on what it will take to begin the world anew, including a return to the traditional values of mutual trust, responsibility, and stewardship. During my own long career, I've done my best to honor these values and build an enterprise that honors the highest principles of fiduciary duty and the interests of investors, to put the owners, if you will, into the driver's seat once again. It all comes down to upholding the values that once made our corporate and financial enterprises so successful, fairly providing the rewards of investing to those who put up the capital and assume the risks involved. To win the battle to restore the soul of capitalism, it is these values that must prevail. It is imperative that we succeed at this monumental task, for we require a powerful and equitable system of capital formation if our nation is to overcome the infinite, often seemingly intractable challenges of our risk-fraught modern world. Our economic might, political freedom, Military strength, social welfare, and even free religious values depend upon it. In the conclusion, I present strong evidence not only that reform is necessary in our capitalistic system, 
but that reform is consistent with the ideas of our nation's great statesmen of the past, as well as our wisest leaders of the present. Specifically, I call for the formation of a national commission to recommend policies that respond to the development of our intermediation society in which direct stock owners are an endangered species and to the frightening shortfall in the expected future wealth of the investment society, largely the public, private, and individual retirement plans that have become the foundation of our national savings. The reconciliation of the interests of these two societies lies in the creation of a fiduciary society in which intermediaries truly represent, first, last, and only, the interests of those they serve. For our nation's vast business financial complex to function the way it must for America to sustain her economic strength, her national power, and her global leadership, and to uphold the values expressed in our Declaration of Independence and our Constitution, it is high time we turn to the task of reforming our system of democratic capitalism. That is the challenge to which corporate America, investment America, and mutual fund America must rise. There is too much at stake for us to fail to do our part.